Welcome to Southside Uniting Church Worship Online. My name is David Fender, one of the ministers at Southside. We're coming to you from Brisbane in Queensland in Australia. And it is great to be able to spend this time of worship with you. So let us worship God. The Spirit of the Lord is with you. Strengthening God, you send forth your Spirit upon us and you give us life. We pray now in this time, at this place, that we may know your love, we may know your grace, we may know the very presence of your Holy Spirit who calls us in. Amen. Let's sing. So would you join me as we pray? Loving God, we come before you 
bringing our own differences and hearts that long to belong. We praise you with our voices and we pray that you will send your spirit upon us. Take away that which divides us and give us a sense of unity. Unite us in your will. Come to us in our worship, to our hearts and to our lives, that we may praise and glorify your name forever. Loving God, who created us and knows everything that we do, we have turned away from you and ignored your commandments. Help us to examine our hearts and to seek out our evil thoughts. We pray for your mercy and grace and we pray that you will lead us always through your everlasting way. Amen. It's in Matthew chapter 9 that we read about Jesus. He crosses over the Sea of Galilee. And when he steps out of the boat, some men brought to him a man who was paralysed. He was lying on a mat. And Jesus looked at the man, looked at their faith and said to the man, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. What does it mean for you to know that Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy God, the one who is perfect in all of his ways, says to you, your sins are forgiven, your sins are wiped clean, that there is nothing that he holds against you, that there is nothing that you could ever do that would stop him from loving you and calling you deeply into him. You might want to take a time maybe to pause and to give thanks to God, to praise God, to reflect on this immense gift that he gives to each and every one of us. Wonder what your experience of church is like. Do you see a church where some people seem to do so much work that they get overburdened, they get worn out, they get burnt out, that you've got other people who are doing tasks that they're not suited for, that they think, yeah, I can do it, but they don't enjoy it. It doesn't bring them life. Do you think of a church where you've got some people who sit back and say, I'm not going to get involved because I'm fearful of being burnt out because I'm just happy allowing other people to carry on. Or of other people who sit back and think, I'm not as good as them. I can't do what they do. It's not a good picture of a church, is it? And it's not something that you would want to invite your friends into or your family into. It's not something that you want to be part of. But what about a church in which those who lead are passionate and have strong gifts of leadership? Those who care for others have a deep gift of mercy and compassion. They have a great empathy for other people. That the people who pray just have this power in the words that they say, in the connection that lifts their concerns right into the very heart of God. What about a church where those who serve give, enjoy, get enjoyment from it? Where they're able to delight in what they're doing? Where it's not a burden, it's actually something that they look forward to. Where people come to their serving opportunities with smiles on their faces, they talk about it with this inflection in their voice that they just cannot get out of it. You know, that's the type of church that I want to belong to. That's the type of church that I want Southside to be. And it's the type of church that I believe that God wants us to be. Over the next four weeks, we're going to spend some time going through a series called Gifted, recognising the fact that God has gifted every single one of us to play, play a part in his, in his mission according to the way in which he has gifted us. To start us off this morning, I want to read to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 12. This is what Paul writes. Now about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, 
but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one of you, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given the gift of, through the Spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as one body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. It's what Paul talks, it says classic teaching about spiritual gifts. And I want to just really dive just into one verse in there. Verse seven, in verse seven, Paul writes, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The first place we talk about what are spiritual gifts. Normally when you think about receiving a gift, what do you think about? You know, it's Christmas Day, it's your birthday, it's an anniversary. Actually, as, I'm share, as you'll be watching this on the 6th of June, it's going to be my eldest children's wedding anniversary. I'm not going to tell you how many years because I actually don't know. And of course, there'll be presents that they will give to each other. We might think that that's what we talk about when it comes to spiritual gifts. But what Paul talks about is the manifestation of the Spirit. Manifestation, a making known of what's happening within us. It's more about the fact that at the moment, I've got asthma. Now, you're not going to know that unless I tell you or until a point where I'm going to cough. And then I cough and I cough and I cough and I cough. And you ask my wife what she thinks about that and then get ready for an earful because it's quite annoying. I've got asthma, but the manifestation, it, the way in which it is made known is through a cough. The Holy Spirit comes upon us. We celebrated two weeks ago the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit comes upon the early church and dwells with every believer for all time into all eternity. And the way we know that is when the Spirit's gifts are made known through the way in which we use them. For me, it's gifts of preaching and of leadership and of faith. For you, it's going to be very different. And those gifts come from us because the Holy Spirit lives within us, which then reminds us or then reaffirms for us what Paul says at the beginning of that verse. Now to each one, for every believer, for every disciple upon whom the Holy Spirit has come, there we are the recipients of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember back many years ago, there was the Oprah Winfrey show? And I've never watched this part of it, but I've heard about it. There'll be times when she'll say to the audience, you win a prize and you win a prize and you win a prize. And the whole audience screams and carries on and everybody has received an iPad or a new car or a trip to the moon or whatever it was that she's trying to give away at that stage. That's what Paul is saying to us. Every one of us, gifts are gifts. But I wonder how many of us think that the gifts are like, a show like, you know, like the new Price is Right or the Price is Right. You've got the whole audience sitting there and they're all in anticipation. Is my name going to be called? Am I going to get a chance and then the name your name is called and you scream and carry on and you come down the front but you haven't got a prize then yet then you have to compete against the others and if you get the right dollar value for the prize then I think you win that prize anyway it doesn't matter and so you get that and then you go on to play for another game and then eventually if you get everything right you go away with the showcase but only one person gets the showcase only a couple of people get to pr win prizes along the way and that great audience the vast audience just get to sit there and then go home with hoarse voices because they've been screaming so much i think it's a real tragedy
that we think that that is what the gifts of the Spirit are like, that only some of us get them, that only some of us are privileged and the rest of us look on almost enviously. But Paul says no, to each and every one of us, to every single one of us, the manifestation of the Spirit is made known. And why is he made known? For the common good. It's a really old joke. It's this family sitting around after Christmas Day and they're looking at their presents. And one of them said, I got an iPod. Another one says, well, I got an iPad. Another one says, I got an iPhone. And the other one says, well, I got an iRon. And of course, you know, how many of you have ever that, you know, the iRon, the iron, wasn't for that person. Just because they are the one who uses it doesn't mean that it is their iron. It's not my lawnmower just because I happen to be the one who uses it. It's not my wife's vacuum cleaner because she happens to be the one who uses it. It's a gift that is given for the sake of the whole family and that's what Paul is getting on. These gifts are given for the sake of the whole family. It's in Romans chapter 1, verse 11 that Paul writes, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. And if you read that, just the words I read, you think that Paul wants to come along and give them a gift. Well, actually, if you dig back into it, what Paul is saying is, I want to come along and use my spiritual gifts to strengthen you, to teach you, to help you understand the faith better. And that's what it is, that those gifts that are given to us, they're actually given for the sake of the community, the sake of the church, so that we build each other up, so that the church becomes so much more than it could be without it. My gift of preaching isn't just for the sake of the fact that I like hearing my own voice. My gift of preaching is so that the church may encounter the living word of Jesus Christ. The gift of mercy that resides in so many of our congregation is not there just so that that person can feel a deep heart connection It's so that they can go out and care for and empathise and show compassion to those who are hurting. The gift of hospitality that, again, so many of us have is not a gift that's just designed so that the person can be busy in drawing other people into their home. It's there so that other people can feel a welcome and an inclusion and we can become more a relational body that we are meant to be. Our gifts are expressions of the Spirit who come upon us. They are given to each and every one of us. They are given for the sake of the body of Christ. And then ultimately, we need all of them for us to become the church that God wants us to be. It's right down in verse 12 that Paul writes, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. In a previous church, I was standing in the foyer one morning talking to a guy who was a paediatrician. And as we're talking, he looks over and there's this little toddler who's just mastered the art of walking. This paediatrician looks at that child and says, do you know how difficult that is? I'd never really thought about it because walking is just second nature to us, isn't it? But then he explained to me how every single part of that child's body, its brain, its eyes, its head, its neck, its arms, its hips, its legs, its feet, all needed to be working in synchronicity, it's a big word, to be able to help that child to walk one foot in front of the other without falling over. And of course, we know what happens when some of our body parts don't work as they should. We hurt our knee, so we kind of favour that leg And of course, we end up with a sore hip, don't we? We break a finger or an arm and we have to go and work with the other arm. Of course, it just makes things tired and we don't do things as well as we can. Every one of us is needed. You are needed in the life of our church. We need you with your gifts of serving or hospitality We need you with your gifts of wisdom and speech. We need you with your gifts of leadership 
we need you to play your part in the life of the church. Because when we don't, we become less than what it is that God needs us and wants us to be. So how do we go about doing that then? How do we become the church that soars because we're empowered by the Holy Spirit? We're using the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're making known the Holy Spirit. I want to suggest an acrostic based on the words soar. S, we seek. We seek from the Holy Spirit what our spiritual gifts are. So I told you, leadership, preaching, faith are my gifts. Do you know what your gifts are? Are you sure that you are working within those giftings? Because when we work within our giftings, we work in the power of the Holy Spirit. O is for openness. Open to the power of the Holy Spirit to change us, to divert us, open to where the Holy Spirit is going to use us. Because our gifts may call us to serve in a different area. We may have been comfortable and regular in serving in a particular way, but our gifts may open us up to something else and it becomes life-giving and it becomes enjoyable and it becomes so much more for us to do. A is to act is just to get in there and do it. Test it, try it. Do what it is that you think the Spirit is doing, is calling you to do, and then if you don't, well, give it another go. Find something else. In the life of God's kingdom, there are no mistakes. There is nothing that we cannot recover from. There is always the ability to start again and go somewhere else. And finally, R is where we rely. We rely on the power of God's Holy Spirit to take his gift that is given to us and our expression of that. And we offer it to the church with humility, with a sense that God is going to take our small gift, whatever it is, and make it known, make it wonderful. Too often in the life of the church, we've found that our service has been heavy, it's been burdensome, it's been resentful, and it's made us wary. We don't want that in Southside. We came into Southside saying that we wanted to release people for mission. Releasing people for mission is taking them from those places that's not suited. We want to remove that. If you've got a burden that, of service that is just not right for you, we want to remove that. But it's also releasing people into the service, into those places where God has called them and equipped them and will allow them to fly. Because Jesus makes this promise to us. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? So God, we do thank you for your spirit who comes upon us, who comes within us and journeys with us and then makes himself known through the gifts that we have been given. We thank you for the variety of gifts that exist within our congregation, that exist within these people who are worshipping here online at this time. And we pray that we may seek you, that we may be open to what you are doing in us, that we may act in the power of your spirit and we may rely on him to be able to allow us to serve you as we are called. God, heal us if we have been wary about service, that we've been burned, we've been taken for granted. Enable us to forgive and lay before us a new path and a new opportunity to serve as you have called us. Amen. When we gather around the table of our Lord, we are gathered as one people wherever we are, across the, the digital divide, 
It is the Holy Spirit who draws us in and connects us, connects us here in this place, connects you in your homes, connects us with our four communities who will be worshipping on Sunday morning, connects us with our evening worship service that will be worshipping on Sunday night. I invite you to be part of this movement of the Holy Spirit. To be part of it, you'll need some form of bread um, and some juice, some um, grape juice is most appropriate, but whatever you can find where you are. Jesus shared this meal with his disciples, and this is what Paul writes about it. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You join me in prayer. God, we praise you and thank you for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who comes to us, who forgoes all of his heavenly glory, all of the wonder that is due to him because he is God, he is fully who you are, becomes incarnate, becomes one with us and experiences all of our life. We praise you that he takes the journey that we could not and would not take. The journey of complete obedience to you. The journey of honouring you in his words, his thoughts and his deeds. The journey that goes to the cross and beyond to death and into new life. And we celebrate that because of his death, he was resurrected and because of his resurrection, we get to experience this meal together with you and all your people now and forever. Holy God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon this bread and this juice that is here before me, this bread and this juice that will be distributed to people throughout our congregation and the bread and the juice that sits be before people in their homes and the places where they find themselves at this moment. We praise you for the mystery that takes these ordinary elements and makes them something that is spiritual, that sustains us in our daily lives. May we know the wonder of who you are and the wonder of Jesus who joins us on our journey of discipleship. Amen. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup that we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. We remember that these, wherever you are, are the gifts of God that are given to us, who are all the people of God. So I invite you to take and to eat. If you're with other people, you might want to share it with them and say the words, the body and blood of Christ that is given for you. So let us pray. Generous God, thank you for all that we have been given. As we learn to recognise and value our own gifts, help us not to overlook the simple ones, the smile for strangers, the word of encouragement, the get well card, the listening ear, the willingness to be patient with the long-winded and gentle with the people we find difficult. Help us embrace all we meet with the generosity of your love. Heavenly God, we pray for the needs that we see in the world. We pray for the people of Victoria, Victoria, Victoria and Melbourne and for all of those others across our world who live in fear from this pandemic. Give you thanks for the changes that are taking place and the spread of the vaccine and the advances that are being made. 
We pray for those who struggle with the loss of loved ones, who struggle with isolation. We pray for those who suffer financially. God, we look for peace in our world. We look for an end to the fighting and to an end to those things that separate individuals, that separate families, that drive countries apart. We pray, our God, for those who suffer because of the greed of so many, those who go hungry, those who are exploited with low wages, those who are, in, who are forced into slavery. We pray for a time when all will be released, when all will get to experience the goodness of what you have to offer. Amen. And we continue in our prayers as we take an opportunity to dedicate our offerings. Will you join me in prayer again? Heavenly God, we bring our offerings with an eager heart as an open act of worship to you. May we find the comfort we desire in you and the strength we need in your name. May your presence be with us in every hour of the day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For 20 years, our Tarragindi community has offered Jaffa, Jesus, a friend for all. It's an after-school children's program that has found hundreds of children moved through it. We've had great leaders who are part of it. Every year, Tarragindi has a Jaffa service. This year, it's on the 20th of June at our usual 8.30 time at Tarragindi. And all of us are invited. We would love to see all of the Jaffa families come along and be part in this celebration, but also all of the members of our congregation. So if you'd like to come along there, please put it in your diary, 20th of June, 8.30 at Tarragindi. On the 12th of June, a Saturday morning from 7.30 until it finishes or 3.30, we're having, our op we're having a working bee at our op shop at Holland Park. We'd love to see as many people come along and just spruce up those buildings and get us ready for a launch date of the 1st of July. I'm really excited about the op shop because it is the first new activity of Southside we were all involved in it. The steering committee has got members from each one of our four communities involved in it. And it's something that we are doing, that we dreamt about this during Destiny Together. And now we're seeing this outreach activity come to fruition. So it'd be great to have as many of you there as possible, just to give a helping hand in sprucing the place up. If you haven't already, can I ask you to just to go online and check your contact details. We sent an email out last week with the notice sheet. If you can just check your contact details and your membership details, that'll help us to be able to produce a church directory. And finally, today being Communion Sunday, just want to remind you that if there is somebody who would normally pay part of our worshipping community because of sickness or something else, hasn't been able to be with us this morning, and you think that it would be a blessing for them to receive communion. Can I ask you to speak to either Esteban or myself, and we will tell you and help you to be able to take communion to those people, and you can share with them as a really significant, caring act for them in their home.
I love that idea that the yoke of Jesus is light, that he actually calls us into service. It is part of our salvation that we then respond to him by giving ourselves in acts of love and grace to him through his church as part of his mission. It's actually what we are recreated for in Jesus Christ. But I want it to be life-giving, encouraging, uplifting. I want it to be a gift to us and to everybody who receives it. I encourage you to go and find that place wherever it is for you. And do that with the blessing of God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>